guys, what's happening? I'm Dustin. If you've been a long time subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, like, and turn on those notifications so I can see you again so that we can get in the studio and melt some glass. I wanted to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. For those of you guys just getting into glass blowing, they are the perfect supplier and source for all of your materials. They have endless amounts of color and tubing. I'd really recommend you check them out. And I want to give them a big thank you for supporting the channel and moving the entire industry of glass forward. Thank you, Mountain Glass Arts. So for today, I wanted to work on some fundamentals with you guys. I noticed that uh, a lot of you guys are requesting fundamental stuff and starting your own studios. So for today, we're gonna to be making just a simple spoon. Here you go. And that's gonna be a fun little project for you guys to make and learn about shaping. Just one color, crucible tubing. If you are interested in learning more about glass blowing, comment in the video and I'll be giving away a one month free pass to my online glass blowing school. In this new series about the fundamentals of glass blowing, I'll be giving away trial memberships to my online school, revereglass.com. But the pieces that I do make are available on that website as well. So if you're interested in this piece or anything else that I've made, please check out revereglass.com and I'd love to get this piece into your collection. Let's get in the studio, melt some stuff, and have some fun. All right, you guys, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm gonna to be making a simple spoon and just kind of going over some of the fundamentals of what you might wanna learn at the beginning of your glass career. This tubing is made by heating up a lot of glass at once and then coating that in a colored glass and then pulling it into tubing. It's called crucible tubing because it's heated up in a crucible before you pull it into the tubing shape. What I'm doing here is blowing a round bottom and then picking out a little hole so that I can blow a thin hole to accommodate the size of my blow tube. And I'm just gonna blow that out and you can see there that I have a small little hole. I'm gonna use my jacks here to flare that open. And once I have that opened up, I'm gonna attach a blow tube. And that's gonna be called a blank once I attach them. This is a tool called a reamer. I'm using that to open up the inside of the colored tubing to be the right size to match the clear blow tube that I'm gonna be connecting it to. So I'm gonna connect these, push a little bit, and then pull and just make sure that connection is nice and straight the whole time. I'm just trying to kind of roll back and forth, look at the straightness and make any corrections that needs to be made. And this tubing was in the kiln before I brought it out on my bench and that's why I can put it directly into the flame. Most borosilicate pipe makers keep their kilns around 1,050 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a range though, depending on the work that you're doing, it can be from 1,000 degrees or even a bit lower, all the way up to 11 or 1,200, depending on what kind of work you're trying to make. So I'm heating up the color tubing and I'm gonna separate it from its main stock and that's gonna give me a shorter section that I can use to make this piece out of. So I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna to change to my smaller flame, which is called a Lynx flame. I'm gonna put the color tubing in this V blade. I'm gonna roll it and create a score mark so that I can separate it. I'm gonna let that cool. And once it cools, I can snap it right off. I'll put that piece on the bench and then we'll continue to make this spoon. So now I'm gonna heat it up on the front and I'm gonna pick out any excess glass and make sure that makes a nice round bottom shape. Knock off the clear glass in the bucket of water and blow a little bit and that'll create a round bottom. So I'm heating it up and you can see that it's all nice and round and now I'm gonna connect a punty to that which is the clear glass that we're gonna to use to hold on to the piece and make sure that it can be stable. Once I have the punty attached, I'm gonna heat up the center of the piece and go back and forth and try to heat up a wide area so that I can pull it down and stretch out the main shaft of the piece. 
So I'm going back and forth with my heat and just pulling very slowly. Sometimes when you first start to blow glass, you feel like it's moving too fast or gonna get away from you and your natural inclination is to pull, but you don't wanna pull as it's getting hotter unless you're very controlled with it because it can really get out of hand very fast. So now that I have that pulled down, I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit and then I'm gonna make the Maria on the mouthpiece. So I'm gonna heat this up and I'm going to make sure it's nice and even and then push it together nice and slow. You can see it heating up, it's becoming malleable and I'm watching it and pushing it together so that it makes a little bit of a ridge which is called a Maria. So I'm gonna let that cool until it stabilizes and then I'm gonna heat up a little bit past that and then I'm gonna put it in the V-blade to make sure I have a nice section to separate it from. I'm heating up the end and then going back into the V-blade, you can see there. And now I'm just gonna control and move this down so that I have a nice place to separate it from. All right. I'm just gonna heat that up a little bit to clean it up. And then we're gonna to continue to shape this project. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the video. Uh, for one, every one of these fundamentals videos, I'm gonna give away a free one month trial to the online school, revereglass.com. So make sure you comment in the video if you'd like to learn more about glass blind. Now I'm gonna detach my punty from the piece. And that's that clear rod that we put on there. And I'm gonna pull that off. Once I have that pulled off, I'm gonna heat up the entire front piece. And I'm gonna put some air in there. I'm gonna heat up this entire front piece and let it collect on itself, which is called a gather. I'm using gravity to hold it down and pull it back a little bit to make a sphere. And when it gets a little bit thicker, I'm going to blow into it and that will expand the bubble. You can see me blow and then I expand the bubble. And now I'm going to heat up a little bit more of the glass because I want a bit bigger of a bowl piece. So I'm going to heat that up closer to the stem. And then I'm going to blow a little bit and make that part of the, the sphere. Once I have that, then I'm going to heat up the whole thing squeeze it down a little bit. We're going to make this a flat pipe. The tool that I'm using is called a masher and that basically just squeezes the glass and makes two flat sides. And there we go. We have a nice flattened piece and that's the beginning of our pipe. You can see it already looks very much like a piece that you would find in a store. So I'm just gonna apply some heat to both sides and get this ready for the bowl. Heating it up and maybe getting out any excess lines or striations or anything, marks that got on the piece from shaping it like this. I'm gonna blow a small hole. You can see it pop right here. In the flame, go back and forth to make sure that it's nice and even. I pop a little bit of a hole and then I use this tool in my right hand called a bowl push. There we go, we push that bowl. Make sure that that bowl hole is facing away from you because you don't want any ash to go in your mouth. You want the ash to hit the back of the piece. Then heat this up, smooth it out a little bit. And then push that in, make sure it's the right size. Now I'm going to heat up the neck a little bit and straighten it out in the bottom. Heat up the bottom and flatten it. All right, after that, I'm going to put in the carb. So I'm going to heat up a little bit of an area and create a hole. I'm going to block the, the air coming out of the bowl hole with the bowl push. And now I'm going to blow a hole on the side of the piece. 
And I'm gonna do what's called a raised carb. I'm gonna put a little bit of excess glass on top of this hole because I think the look of that carb is gonna be nice. The color that I'm using for that is Stargazer by North Star Glassworks. And I'm just gonna go around the hole and collect that with some glass. And then I'll blow into that and create a nice carb. Just wrap the glass around, kind of make it a little bit thicker. And then once I close that up, I'll be able to heat up that whole carb and then use my bull push again to block the air coming out of the hole. Just getting that nice and hot. Now I'm gonna blow, expand that, watching that bubble go in to that raised carb area. Just trying to smooth it out, make sure that it looks exactly the way that I want. I'm gonna heat this up, block the hole, and then blow just a little bit. And there we go. So now I'm gonna do one final blow as I pop the hole in there. You can see the hole come out. There it goes. And now I'm gonna use a little bit of the same glass to make some dots on the piece. And these are just decorative dots just to add a little bit of texture and color to the piece. And I'm using the same color, which is that North Star Stargazer. It's a new experimental color. I'm going back and forth with different dots and different sizes, and then I'm going to melt them in so they're all nice and smooth. That's one thing you really wanna keep in mind if you're adding on dots or anything else onto your piece, is that they have to be fully melted in around the sides so that there's no hard angles or ridges. That can cause cracking later. So now I'm gonna use my small flame, which is the Lynx flame. And I'm going to just heat up these dots individually and make sure that they're all melted in. And I'm going back and forth between different dots in different areas on the piece because I don't wanna to heat too much of the piece up in one particular pl place at a time. So I will go back and forth to different areas of the bowl. I'm gonna put on a couple more um, ridges and lines to show you guys maybe what a different technique would be like to add some more texture. So this is just some wavy lines. I'll put a few of these on the piece and then go back and forth. Melt those in. And I'll put on one or two more here for you guys. All right, now that we have all of those on, we'll put on one last one and then we're gonna melt each one in very carefully like we did with the dots. Alrighty, I wanna make sure that these are melted in, but I also wanna make sure that the piece stays straight. So I have to be very careful of moving it around too much. This torch is called a Smith uh, Little Torch and it's really good for tight angles and um, small little pieces that you want to melt in. So I'm just going to go around each one of these around the edge and make sure that it's all melted in nice and smooth. I'm going to heat that up and take it in and out of my main flame, checking to make sure that everything is melted in and go on to the next one. Just want to follow the whole thing down, make sure it's all melted in, all the way around. Still leaving the ridge, but definitely melted in. And this is one thing that you really want to keep in mind as you're starting your glass blowing journey, is to melt everything in nicely. So I'm just being really mindful with my mini torch and also with the shaping of my spoon, making sure that I don't distort it at all, but I am able to melt in each piece of the ridge all the way in so it's nice and fluid. Now I'm gonna heat up the whole thing, make sure it's all good, but you wanna be careful not to bend this in a way that you don't want. So I'm gonna straighten it on the marver there. And then I wanted to show you how to add a few more little dots to the mouthpiece, just so that uh, it would be a good lesson because mouthpieces are pretty difficult 
to decorate so you want to make sure that it's nice and warm and then be really careful when you're putting these on not to dis shape it or uh, move it around in any way that's that's going to mess up your piece so i'm just applying a little bit of this stargazer color on the ends here and kind of turning those lines into some more dots so we have a nice consistent pattern i'm going to try to fill up the space nicely leaving a little bit of negative space as well all right so now that i have that all in there I'm just going to heat these dots up really nice and slow. I'll go from one side to the other as to make sure not to bend this piece. Flatten it out a little bit on the back so it sits up nicely. And then go over each one of these dots to make sure that they're all melted in nice and evenly. I'm going to heat it up with my Lynx flame. And this is a little bit on the oxidizing side of a flame. There we go, just push it down, making sure that it sits up properly. Melting in each dot, making sure that it's nice and melted in. Once everything's melted in, I'm going to take my diamond shears and separate this piece from the blow tube. I'm going to heat that up. <clears throat> As it gets soft, I'm going to grab my diamond shears. I'm going to create a little score mark by cooling it down pretty fast and knock it off. Now I'm going to heat up the end, make sure that it's nice and melted in so it doesn't cut your lip or anything. I'm going to use the reamer to open it up and there we go. We have basically finished the mouthpiece at this point. I'm going to put that on the table. You guys can check that out. And here's the finished piece. After it's been through the kiln cycle, you can see the different colors of the stargazer and the greasy glass, grease stain color. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please head to revereglass.com to learn more about glass blind. I'll be giving away free trials to membership. You know where I'm going with this, I just gotta get it out. Okay. Uh, I'll be giving away trials to my online school. I'll be giving away trial memberships in this the likes and turn on those notifications. It's free. We can blow some glass together and why not? And then, um,